really lucky to be sitting next to Avram Pilch from Laptop Mag and Tom's Hardware. He sees everything, he's like a tech sieve. He just sort of takes it all in and processes it. And so, and is a dad. So tell me, what, do you, what have you seen that's really gotten you excited about the changing home? Well, I think, I think that uh, every appliance in the house is starting to get smart. And this year I've seen maybe five or six different smart light bulb solutions. Who would have thunk it that your light bulb had to be smart? Particularly when it's connected to the Thomas Edison, you know, 100 year old bulb connector and yet it, uh, I've seen ones that can become security cameras, music players, uh, things to help monitor your kids, uh, just, just with a light bulb. So every aspect of your, your old house uh, is going to be controllable. Um, it's, it's interesting to wonder just what the limit of that is. I, I know. Has anybody tried to buy a light bulb lately? Do you, I feel like I need a PhD in light bulb. Uh, and there are apps actually that will tell you match your light bulb and I walk in with pictures and I, I don't know how the stores are going to solve this or bulbs.com. I think the biggest question in smart homes might be what happens if your home is smarter than you are? How do you, how do you figure out how to use your home? Because you know, you're taking at things that are really commonplace people know how to use, like a light bulb, and adding smart technology to them. Smart homes, the two people with smart homes. So I have to tell you, I do have a light bulb in my kitchen that plays music. I do. And I think it's awesome. Oh. I really do. I mean, I didn't want to, you know, open up walls and put in wiring and put in a built-in speaker and the little stereo thing under my counter I have sounds like crap and it's a Bluetooth connected speaker. Uh, the only thing is when I start text messaging, the light bulb in the ceiling starts going click, 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 and my son's like, stop texting. But, you know, the thing that gets me about all these things that we've seen here is they all work on their own ecosystem, and as we know, there's Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and Zigbee and Z-Wave and all that, but none of this from one we talks to the other. I think, I think that's going to be a huge challenge. Uh, I think that uh, when it comes to these type of standards, might often makes right, so uh, I think it's interesting to look at, for example, that, that Whirlpool is partnered with Nest because Nest is such a big name and Nest has Google behind it, so uh, obviously I, I think Who's going to win out in the standards war is whoever sells the most units and has the most kind of financial and, and marketing might behind them. But it's really fascinating that you're able to take something, your old lamp, and turn it into a smart smart device. I think is is a really great use of, of technology. I saw another, you know, thermostats. Obviously, another huge huge area of innovation. I saw one uh, called Ecobee that uh, that seemed pretty interesting too, where. It was actually measured, so, yeah. put sensors around your house to tell, hey, your bedroom is cold, uh, you know, but the bathroom is, is warm, something that a lot of ther the thermostats just don't do. I mean, I just moved into a house. My thermostat always thinks it's warm because it's in the living room, but upstairs it could be, I could see my own breath. Yeah, I think, I think the sensors on these things are going to be something people have to figure out. So mine... I, I do have a Nest, and I'm so thrilled about the Works with Nest program that, that all of these other appliances are going to start being able to interact with it. But my Nest senses when um, someone's around, and so when my husband's in our home office and I'm not there going back and forth in front of it, he calls me and says, it's freezing in this house, can you turn on the heat? Because it doesn't know he's there, and you know, you need to kind of walk past in front of the sensor. So it'll be nice when all of these things start talking to each other in a way that makes it um, so just very simple for people to use. Yeah, no, no doubt. Uh, I think that, you know, there's going to be somewhat of a learning curve with smart home stuff, just like there was a learning curve with people learning to use smartphones. But, uh, you know, now it's at a point where, any, where most people can just pick up a smartphone and start using it. So I think with smart home, it's going to be the same thing. Are we ready? We're ready? Okay. So I think you did uh, get introduced to Avram, but I'll tell you I've worked with Avram for many, many, many years. Uh, a wonderful tech reporter and tech writer, and I leave you in good hands. Jump up there now, it looks like. Great. So uh, we're going to start by, uh, by talking with uh, Ben from Whirlpool, uh, who's going to come up here and talk about uh, some of their uh, really big uh, innovations. 
particularly uh, in terms of turning regular appliances that you're used to, like your washing machine or your dryer, and making them incredibly smart. Oh, hey, my lab works. Hey. Great. Great hey to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you as well. So, so Ben, what is your role at, at Whirlpool? Yeah, so uh, I am the uh, uh, strategic partnership lead for Whirlpool Corporation for smart homes. I uh, also help uh, drive our connected strategy. Fantastic. So what can you tell us about some of the things Whirlpool is doing at, here at CES to drive the smart home forward? Yeah, great. Cool. So uh, I'm going to try to switch over here. Okay, cool. Um, great, guys. So, uh, so yeah, what I'd like to do here uh, over the next 15 minutes is, is share with you how Whirlpool Corporation uh, and Whirlpool Brand specifically uh, thinks about the smart home. Um, so before we, we, we kind of dive into it, there are two uh, philosophies or fundamental kind of guideposts that Whirlpool uh, believes very strongly and that helps guide us as we move into uh, this new era of smart homes. And, and the first is that uh, we believe uh, that every chore a consumer does is, is essentially an act of love for something or more importantly someone in their life, right? I mean, when we think about the chores we do, they really are uh, either for something that we care about greatly or, or our family. Um, and so we have to recognize that when we talk about innovation, we think about how to bring new benefits to consumers, it has to be in such a way that we're helping them care for, for those that they love. Uh, the second big piece here is that uh, it has to be very purposeful innovation, right? The, the term purposeful innovation uh, is, is kind of this cornerstone that, that's used within Whirlpool uh, and, it, and it helps us uh, stay focused on what's actually most important to them, not tech for tech's sake, but making sure that it's actually relevant. Um, because you know there are a lot of great technologies out there, but you have to really first start with the consumer. Um, so as we look at these smart home, what I thought I'd do today is, is share with you uh, our new smart top load washer and dryer, which is essentially kind of our second generation of smart laundry. Uh, and it does a nice job of uh, showcasing the different ways in which we believe connectivity can really um, bring that new level of care to consumers. Um, so, uh, before, you can, before you can dive into all the, the smart technology, you have to make sure that at its core, the console, the way in which you interact with the physical machine makes sense, right? So in a lot of our consumer research, we, we, we found that uh, consumers actually were selecting the normal cycle about 70% of the time. When in fact, there were oftentimes better solutions for them. There were better options, but perhaps it was just a little too uh, complicated or, or they were maybe in too much of a hurry, and so they said, okay, just, just normal, right? I think we've all done that before. So what we did is we went back and we looked and we said, well, how are families actually talking to one another, right? Forget the language that might be showing up on, on laundry machines. How do they speak to one another? They say stuff like, hey, what is it that you want to wash, or how do, how do you want to wash it? So we took that language that's just used in the family every day, and we literally put it onto the machine itself, right? So, so on the top left here, it says what to wash, and then on the top right, how to wash it. Two simple questions, and if you can answer those two, we can give you a much better wash that's perfect for what it is you need. So good example, let's say it's um, Sunday, 8 p.m., kids are getting ready to go, go to bed, uh, but you still have uh, the kids' bed sheets that they're not done yet, right? So um, you can take the bed sheets, you come over to the machine, place them in. What to wash? Pretty simple, sheets. How to wash? Well, given the current situation, given the kids need to go to bed soon, you select quick. So in the, in the course of two buttons, you now have a quick wash ready to go, right? More, more focused on giving the consumer what they need at that moment, right? So this intuitive touch display is a nice foundation for us now to build those connectivity benefits, which I'll, I'll speak to next. So uh, at the base level, you have uh, essentially remote status and remote control, right? This idea that even when you're not at present at the physical machine, you can be aware of its current states, uh, you know, how much longer is left in the cycle, you can be notified when a cycle is complete, and you can also remotely control uh, not only starting and pausing uh, the appliance, but you can control different options and, and settings on there. Right, so this um, is available on the mobile app, either on your tablet or your phone. And that allows you to, to begin, you know, for the first time ever, make choices from the comfort of your couch uh, instead of perhaps kind of hovering over the appliance, you know, maybe in the basement or, or wherever it might be. Um, so what's exciting, though, about appliances, as opposed to some of the more uh, simplistic uh, Internet of Things items out there, is appliances really are, 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 have a lot of different opportunities to, to um, 
leverage connectivity beyond just remote status and control. For instance, we have the ability to offer now custom cycles and new cycles even after you've purchased the machine. So on your mobile app, you might have a, a refresh two years from now that all of a sudden shows up a new uh, baby clothes cycle, right, that we've just come out with. Well, you being a new parent, all of a sudden this cycle is very relevant to you. You can select it, send it to your machine so that it becomes a physical option on your machine. Right? You can also customize cycles on your own. So uh, let's say you do a lot of yoga, right? and there's a certain way in which you like to uh, uh, wash and dry your yoga pants. So you can create from the comfort of your couch you know, Jill's yoga pants and send it to the machine so that it's there physically. Even if you don't have your phone on you when you're doing laundry, it's still right there for you. Um, and it was, it was made possible by uh, sending it uh, remotely. Um, so one of the other uh, great uh, benefits of connectivity is this ability to help consumers uh, overcome some minor obstacles that they might face along the way uh, through a diagnostic tool. So a um, good example, um, uh, currently, if a, a, you know, a, on a non-connected uh, washer, if you have a large bed comforter, for instance, right? And you take this large bed, com bed comforter, you, you put it in the wash, you hit start. Our machines are actually smart enough to pause when they sense an out of balance load, right? This can happen when some of the comforter might kind of all go to one side. And now when it pauses, sometimes consumers say, well, why did it pause? And they might go try to do research online or, or maybe they call our customer support and walk them through it. There's now an easier way to overcome those, the, those obstacles. And so uh, in this same scenario on our smart top load washer and dryer, the moment that happens, uh, you're across the house, wherever, you get a simple notification that says, hey, unbalanced load, but don't worry, here's a simple how-to video on how to overcome this issue. Now, if it's an issue that might be a little more uh, something that you can't solve right there on your own, uh, the app guides you through straight to our customer support where you can then uh, send a quick message and seek that additional troubleshooting that, that's going to help you overcome the issue. So really starting to simplify uh, any, any issues that you might face. Now, uh, the other... Uh, big opportunity here in the smart home, and I think we've talked about it, uh, it sounds like we've talked about it a lot earlier today, uh, is uh, uh, working with other brands, right? This integration uh, beyond just your machine, but into uh, other machines in the home. Um, and so uh, Nest uh, is, I think, a really good example of that, how uh, Whirlpool uh, identified Nest as a brand that really uh, shared that consumer first mentality when it comes to designing products. Um, and so Whirlpool is actually the first home appliance uh, manufacturer to work with Nest and the Nest platform. And what we've been able to do is utilize the home and away signal that Nest uses currently to help uh, save energy in the home by adjusting uh, the HVAC, you know, heating and air conditioning when you're home or when you're away. Well, we can now use that same home and away mode, those same signals to help care for your clothes better and ha help care for your family. And a couple examples. Um, when the dryer, for instance, is running, uh, it can ask the Nest thermostat, say, hey, is anybody home? Oh, no one's home? Okay, I'm going to go into a more energy efficient mode. But yeah, it's a little bit longer, but you know, no one's around, so they won't mind, and I can save energy just, just when no one's here. Right? Another thing uh, the dryer can do, it can, uh, at the end of a cycle, Right? When, the, when the clothes normally might just sit there and, and perhaps they get a little more stale and, and uh, wrinkled if you're not home. Well, now Nest can tell the dryer, hey, no one's home, and the dryer says, thanks for letting us know. We'll now go into what we call wrinkle shield, uh, and it will tumble those clothes intermittently, just keeping them fresh until you return. Uh, and one of the newest uh, integrations is going to be uh, uh, triggering what's called quiet mode. So our new smart top load washer and dryer has a quiet mode that can be controlled remotely from your mobile app, but it can also be triggered when uh, uh, Nest lets the laundry pair know that you're home. So how this might play out is, um, let's say you've got a, a nursery that's right down the hall from your washer and dryer, and you're, you're attempting to, you know, you're putting your kids to bed. Um, the quiet mode will mute any audible chimes or sounds coming from the machine. It'll actually, uh, uh, in certain instances, help lower the overall sound of the wash itself. So that, again, can automatically turn on when the machine knows that you're home, right? Taking one step out of, of the process of making sure that uh, your child gets a, a restful night's sleep. So these are the sorts of integrations that we've been able to create with, with Nest, which uh, I think are really compelling and, and very interesting. And, and um, another integration uh, is with Habitat for Humanity. Now, this is really special. This is called Connect to Care. Um, and what it allows us to do is uh, the consumer can set uh, automatic donations, a small, simple donation, every time they do a load of laundry, automatically donate that to Habitat for Humanity. 
So Habitat has been a longstanding uh, philanthropic partner of Whirlpool Corporation. In fact, uh, every home built in North America by Habitat for Humanity has a range and a refrigerator that was donated by Whirlpool. And so this has been a really important um, cause for us internally for a number of years, and now with the connected product, for the first time we can give our consumers that same opportunity to share um, in that giving. And so essentially, I imagine this, right? You know, you get this top load smart washer and dryer into your home, that first night at dinner, you now have this great conversation with your kids. What a teaching moment, right? To be able to say, hey, have you, know, have you guys heard about Habitat for Humanity? Let's talk about what its purpose is. Who are the families that are helping? Why is it that a family like ours might be, be the right people to help out those in need? Let's pick a donation amount. Maybe it's 10 cents, maybe it's 25 cents. And as a family, you can make that decision so that every time you do a load of laundry, yeah, it's a bit of a chore, but you know what? It kind of feels good too because you're, you're doing something for others in need. And, and this is the sort of stuff that I think more, more companies should begin to start thinking, how does the smart home, yeah, yes, how does it benefit us as, you know, in our home and in our personal lives, but are there ways that we can tap into this technology to become better people, right? I mean, become a better society. And I, and I think that's something that's currently underutilized and, and we're really excited to, to, to kick this program off. So, uh, finally, uh, in terms of partnerships um, and integrations, uh, kind of uh, some newer news for us that we're really excited about is to announce our upcoming uh, integration with Wink, uh, the Wink app, the Wink uh, home automation platform. Uh, we, we've identified Wink as, as a, a brand that's doing great things in terms of making home automation more accessible to consumers and simpler, right? And, and that simplicity is really ties back into that, that ability to care for your family, like we mentioned earlier. And so uh, we see this as a really uh, exciting new, uh, new partnership. And so with that, 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 that kind of wraps up how we're thinking about uh, the smart home and connectivity broadly. Again, making sure that it always is very purposeful uh, and ultimately helps families care uh, for one another. Wow, thank you. Thank you. So um, I, uh, I had a couple questions for you, and I also yeah. want to uh, see if the audience might, might have some. Uh, where do you think, uh, so obviously Whirlpool's invested heavily into the washing machine, making washing machine and dryer smart. What other parts of the home do you think should be smart or is Whirlpool you know, working on? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. So, um, you know, at our, at our booth uh, in, the, in the Sands Expo, we've got um, our interactive kitchen uh, concept, which is, uh, does a really nice job of, of showcasing how we uh, view the future of the kitchen. Um, so, right, this whole idea of the food journey, uh, everything from uh, acquiring those ingredients, um, keeping them fresh, uh, using them at their optimum freshness, uh, making ingredients uh, or recipe recommendations based on, uh, you know, ingredients that are in your fridge before they've gone bad, um, and then being able to uh, manage the whole process of cooking, right? Not only taking into account what guests are, are going to be at that meal uh, and, and accounting for that and modifying it through the, the recipe, um, and all, also making it available, um, not necessarily from a phone, but, you know, cooking is a, is a moment when really uh, having hands-free is important, right? So using the backsplash behind the uh, cooktop to uh, help guide the consumer through that cooking process. What advances in technology do you think we're going to see in the smart home? Do you think robotics play, is going to play a part? Uh, that's an interesting question. I think for us, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're really open to kind of exploring all sorts of technologies, but again, making sure that that serves a very real purpose, right? So whether it's robotics or uh, a level of automation that hasn't been available in the past, um, I think the key is to make sure that the home is adapting to the consumer and how they already live their lives versus uh, the other way around where you have to somehow modify the way in which you're living because you're in a smart home. That's great. Do we, I think we have, do we, Robin, do we have time for any questions? Great. Anybody? Yes. Um, any uh, any focus on trying to um, uh, send uh, software upgrades maybe to some of the uh, Whirlpool equipment that's in the home? As part yeah, of the yeah. So I, I can't Thanks. speak specifically to product roadmap, but what I can say is uh, we do believe 
uh, connected products will unlock the ability to, again, like I mentioned earlier, post-purchase, after you've purchased the product, still being able to uh, unlock new, new use cases. Now, whether that means it's on the physical product or perhaps virtually, like I mentioned earlier with the mobile app, uh, we absolutely recognize the opportunity there of ensuring that, unlike in the past where it was a single transaction uh, and then the relationship falling was, was perhaps minimal, now we have an opportunity to continually uh, you know, deliver on that promise that was initially made when the purchase was made uh, to continue to help them care in new ways uh, uh, by updating uh, the app and, and the product itself. Thank you.